Hello, fellow seekers. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice Podcast. My name is L, and I return today to speak on some spiritual philosophy and the Law of One and my life and how I make sense of all of this type of stuff. So today I have a few quotes lined up, and I guess they're going to be about the higher self, how we are sort of have a blueprint or a map that we is our life, and we the destination is known, but we have this map. And so I'm going to talk about this map and how the end is maybe the higher self or or maybe the creator or something like this if you will and so ha- all of the sort of topics I will go through briefly here the higher self all paths lead to the one the one blueprint uh, we're going to talk about free will and sort of programmed lessons in life like what is it that you've come into this incarnation wanting to learn what is a programmed lesson that is can the higher self program a lesson while you're in the middle of an incarnation can they intervene that's sort of what I I want to talk about. And yes, with that is free will and determinism and simultaneity or the sort of illusory <laughs> the luge, the illusoriness of time. So, without further ado, let me just read you a couple of quotes, and then we, I will try to explain to you what I think about them. So, this is from the Law of One material. You can get this information on my website at theoneinfinitecreator.com, and I have links to the LL Research Group, who provides us all of this information for free. So, thank you very much to them. So, this is from session seventy-one point one three, and Raw states each entity can contains within it all the densities and subdensities of the octave, so that in each entity, no matter whither its choices lead it, its great internal blueprint is one with all others. Thusly, its experiences will fall into the patterns of the journey back to the original Logos. This is done through free will, but the materials from which the choices can be made are one blueprint. End of quote. So if I would just want to explain a little bit of what how I interpret this, it would be that you are in an incarnation right now, and you have this sort of um, plan that you incarnate between you and your higher self, and maybe you would even consider the creator, because everyone's one and we're all working together. And so you come into this incarnation with an idea, and this idea that you've come here with is a series of lessons that you would wish to learn. And so you would think that sometimes people like to think that when you are incarnating that you know big events in your life are or even smaller events and just everything that happens to you is predestined and pre-planned and and so that to my understanding it's not completely like that it's a little bit more fluid and the fluidity of it is like this it is like you have a lesson a general lesson and your higher self is in tune with infinity with all and so infinity can bend to a variety of circumstances it doesn't necessarily you know, you're trying to make sense of it with your small mind, me, myself, all the same, and uh, infinity is larger than our mind, larger than the illusion. And so there's really nothing that can happen within this third density and within our incarnation that things can't change and bend to offer us the same lesson within an infinity of different circumstances. And a lot of that actually, believe it or not, doesn't necessarily have to come down to events, but actually your perception and the way that you perceive things. Because the way you see things is colored by what I would consider sort of the filters of perception of your chakras. And so no matter where your lessons are in the current moment, you're going to see them through either a series of sort of blocked or open chakras to whatever degree that you're open through them or not, um, which can be in varying degrees. And that will filter the way that you see things so that, I guess what I'm saying, so that what is important and what is the needed lesson for you immediately is always right in front of your face and you almost can't help but to see it just by the way that you're, you know, perceiving things. So with that, um, if I may go back to the quote, they talk about the internal blueprint is one with all others. So your experiences are going to fall into a certain pattern and a journey which makes its way back to the logos or to the creator, which you could, um, you know, say it as And so, but you do this through free will. And so how can you be given a blueprint and still have free will? Well, I will read you the next uh, quote and that would hopefully um, give you some of that idea. So this is from 36.7 in the Law of One material, raw material. And so this is going to be sort of about programmed lessons and, you know, can a higher self intervene in an incarnation? So they state here, quote, The higher self is like the map in which the destination is known. The roads are very well known. These roads being designed by intelligent infinity working through intelligent energy. 
However, the higher self aspect can program only for the lessons and certain predisposing limitations if it wishes. The remainder is completely the free choice of each entity. There is the perfect balance between the known and the unknown. End of quote. So I suppose this maybe takes a little bit explaining. They say the higher self is like a map in which the destination is known. So what is the higher self? I can maybe back up a little bit here. I mean, to my understanding, um, it's sort of almost like the Trinity in the Christian sort of thing. And they talk about the Trinity. So there's um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So if this is just my perception of things, okay? And I'm not a particularly Christian person, but I like a lot of things from... Uh, <laughs> from I, I, I suppose I like to borrow a lot of things from there. I see a lot of uh, synchronicity and resonance with my path within some of some of these teachings. So uh, I would see it as the sun is sort of like you or the Christ, um, because, you know, I know people don't like to say, whoa, the sun, I'm not the Christ, but, and I understand that you're not, but, but you are in a way, because your path is, 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 a, is the path of Christ in, in a sense, and that, um, you know, the sense of oneness as well, once you have opened your heart, um, you then sort of have opened your heart to Christ in my, in my understanding. So you are the sun, and then we have the Father, which is the Creator, and you have the Holy Ghost, which is your higher self, which is sort of between the two. In fact, maybe I should say them the other way. So let's go the um, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. If you know, if, if the way if I would put them in a hierarchical structure for you is the way it, that I would see it. And so the higher self is in also from the law of one material, the sixth density version of yourself. And so in this dimension or octave oh sorry it would say be octave which is like an octave of eight dimensions or seven dimensions in fact because the end of the seventh is the eighth and then, then that's the beginning of the next set of sevens so like it's almost like when you end seven you go to one but altogether call it an octave um, and so the sixth density is where your higher self resides. So you are as um, evolving spiritually through the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and into the sixth density. And right now we find ourselves in the third density. But this is um, the future you, in fact, from the sixth density because the sixth density sort of operates as a little bit outside of time. And therefore what you have is this higher self, which is an amalgamation of all the incarnations before it got to the sixth density. Um, so <laughs> you can still see it linearly in a way because everything sort of did, does happen linearly, but then time is also fluid. And my understanding is it's like everything is happening simultaneously. And therefore the higher self can is like this perfect example of you. It's this perfect representation of all the incarnations, every lesson that you've learned and the sort of perfectest you of all of your incarnations and all the knowledge and all the love and all the wisdom that you've attained is within this self that we call the higher self. And that higher self is, um, sort of your, I suppose, connection between you and God, because in the sixth density, when you eventually make it there, we're in the third density right now, when you make it to the sixth density eventually, before you dissolve into the law of foreverness, which is, you know, the, the path of the seventh density, and that before you sort of go off and become the creator and become all, um, because at that point you almost lose your identity, well, um, you, you would like to leave a little portion of yourself, a little, you wouldn't want to just get rid of all that knowledge. And, and so what you would do is you create this little sixth density higher self, which is a um, storehouse of knowledge, a sort of holographic, perfect projection of you, which then is like a thing that looks back in time and assists all your previous selves to make it to its final stage of being itself. So I understand that that's very contradictory. And then it's sort of like, well, where does the free will end of the higher self and of me here who's behind the veil and third density? Where, where, where do I stand with all of that, right? And in this quote, they do kind of state that a little bit. So they state here, and this is still in 36.7, the higher self aspect can program only for the lessons and certain predisposing limitations if it wishes. And so end of quote. So they go into this in other parts of the Law of One and even maybe in the Quo material. Uh, but they do talk about how you 
have your free will within this um, incarnation to, you know, make the choices that you want to make in a certain manner that you would like to make them in sort of a certain time that you would like to make them. But if I suppose you between you and your higher self before you incarnate here, you decide, okay, well, maybe by the time I'm, you know, 25 or whatever, if I haven't learned this certain thing, then go ahead and kick this in for me, because I know that if you do this to me, this will make me learn this certain lesson, <laughs> right? So it's not ideal necessarily, uh, but it's something that you and your sort of the knowledgeable self of your, you know, yourself that's connected to God and everything is the higher self, um, is is aware of the, t the, the appropriate time to kick that in if they need to. So predisposing limitations, you know, I don't want to make it sound scary, but, you know, it's like something that would just obviously happen to you that was called a limitation here, right? So it's something that would probably limit you in a way which would make you be forced to sort of work in the ways of love because, you know, most of these lessons that we have to deal with is deal with the lessons of love, uh, maybe balance of love and wisdom or wisdom and love or, but usually it's just to do with love and, and just to like figuring out how to open your heart and not be so hard-headed and too intellectual, like all of that stuff is good. Mind and the brain are good to be balanced with each other, but often it is tempting in this density to, uh, you know, be tempted to use the mind solely and just to, to use it to a point where uh, you don't use the heart ever and you think, ah, oh, that heart thing is so silly. What's the point of using that thing? And right, so, you know, go, go about that that sort of uh, attitude a little too long and and you know maybe you and your higher self have thought of of something that needs to be a bit of a smack in the face in fact uh <laughs> this is funny i should have grabbed the quota but i only thought of it just now there's another part in the law of one where raw talks about how the large board needs to be applied to the forehead and um they state something about how you know, although it may seem terrible to see an entity sort of struggle and to go through something that seems very awful for them, um, you know, do be grateful that maybe the higher self has offered the board to the forehead, which allows the self to finally see for the first time in a certain way. Um, so although you may see people struggle terribly, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, they have are, are going there, you know, hopefully this is enough for them to be able to wake up to whatever it is that they and themselves <laughs> are, are wanting to learn for, for their, this incarnation. And, uh, you know, you and me, we d would never know what, what someone's lesson involves. So we shouldn't be too judgy in, in what it is, but just sort of share this with you to, uh, maybe, alleviate suffering just you know i know when you see people suffer it seems terrible and, and it is terrible but um, this is sort of a way to see it and and sort of be like okay there's there's reason for this it's not just completely pointless suffering i think it's when we see pointless suffering it's kind of kind of makes you nihilistic and we don't want to go down that path that's a not a fun path to go down so uh, there was this talk about free will and determinism. So there's this idea of simultaneity, meaning that sort of everything is happening at the same time. So we have this idea that right now in the third density, we are in what we would call space time. And so that's like space divided by time. And then when you're in the metaphysical realm, which is almost like, in a way, a little bit like every realm after the third density, you're almost operating in sort of the metaphysical, which is the time space continuum, if you would, if you will. So there's sort of physical, which is space time, metaphysical, which is time space. So if you would like to think about how you right now are sitting in a space moving through time, so then you have to think about how you would be sitting in time moving through space, I suppose. And you can see how that is very <laughs> difficult to comprehend. And I'm not going to go ahead and try to, um, because your brain usually just melts down when you try to think like that. But this is the idea is that your, your higher self is operating from a, a place where it almost sees all time happening at the same time. And therefore, you know, it can operate from the future and look back and see all its previous selves and sort of help them guide them on their blueprint on their map and make sure that they sort of stay the course and then i will state um, that there is this thing in the ll research material from quo where they talk about this map and they talk about just to make it easy for you that the you know you've been given a map
map and the end is the higher self or the creator or whatever the end goal and that this is your free will the blueprint is you have the blueprint you know where the beginning is you know where the ending is and your free will is you have all the free will in the world to decide which way you would like to get to the end of the map and you know to get to your destination would you like to go left would you like to go right would you like to go up and down over backwards you want to hit a dead end dead end and then come back and you know it doesn't really matter eventually you're going to hit <laughs> the the end of the map and you everyone will get there um it is just a matter of time and so with this time um that is sort of the idea that although it may be seemingly tragic to see somebody take a lot of time to learn a lesson they have all the time in the universe so the higher self you know can try its best to intervene if it has its its lessons that it wants to give but uh, they state here in st session 70.11 quote the higher self does not manipulate its past selves it protects when possible and guides when asked but the force of free will is paramount the seeming contradictions of determinism and free will melt when it is accepted that there is such a thing as true simultaneity the higher self is the end result of all development experienced by the mind body spirit complex to that point end of quote so let me just read that back to you really quick and I'll go a little slower and I want to just highlight a couple of things. They state here, the higher self does not manipulate its past selves. So like I said, it doesn't really manipulate. It has a few lessons that it may sort of jump in, but really you agreed to that ahead of time, okay? So it's not manipulating, it is participating, but you're mostly making the decisions here yourself and your higher self is really not trying to get involved unless, they state here, it protects when possible and guides when asked. So, you know, protects when possible. Obviously, if you're very naive and dumb here as a, <laughs> as a uh, behind the veil who has forgotten everything um, soul, which we all are, so then, you know, you're getting into something and you're a little naive, there is certain protection that I suppose is available, is my understanding to you. Um, if it's sort of like, not your time, it's not your time, is, is kind of how I read that, right? And then they also state here, it guides when asked. So this is what I wanted to highlight, guides when asked. This to me is about being grateful. This is about asking. This is about, um, f about your free will to ask and it's like well what do i ask for uh, well you ask for understanding ask for what should i ask for uh, <laughs> you know ask for meaning ask you know even then you can just basically if another way of asking is to be grateful you maybe you can just be grateful you can say oh thank you you know thank you higher self thank you creator i really appreciate everything here that's it's on going on in my life and the magic that i'm partaking in this is um you know really awesome i just thank you for everything and being grateful, something like this. I know that sounds very simple, but being grateful is another way of saying thanks for the help. <laughs> and and thus sort of being like, yes, feel free to help in the future. Um, but, you know, you can sort of even just state those things, in, in my opinion, as long as you are... Um, you know, sort of keeping it between you and yourself. You don't want to be like making making agreements with things outside of yourself, okay? So just the higher self, you would want to do that because they state here, the force of free will is paramount. The seeming contradictions of determinism and free will melt when it is accepted that there is such a thing as true simultaneity. So, um, you know, I read that part already, but I just wanted to read it again because that is giving you the idea of the, um, you know, who is doing what, who's pulling what lever. Well, it's mostly you, but it is your higher self, but there's this magical... Um, I, there's this magical idea of nowness uh, that's th everything is happening within the now. Like, you know, I'm talking about past incarnations, all your past incarnations. Uh, well, I don't know, just throw this by you. What if all of that is happening at the same time? What if all of our lives are happening at the same time? You know, they, they sort of are in a way, um, <laughs> even though the future hasn't happened. And I will almost agree that the future hasn't happened, that your choice in this moment is the only thing that does matter. Like the past sort of doesn't matter in a way. And the future almost doesn't matter in a way. It's almost about just the, the, the where, where you're pointing your compass right now at all times. And can you keep the compass pointing in the same direction? In other words, is your will and your focus pointed on what you know and what you want, which is like seeking the creator. Um, to me, it's about that consistency of choice 
that is what I learned from this weird idea of time, and it's very hard to explain it. I hope I'm getting a little bit of it across to you, um, but you can maybe just try to think a bit of it more. It might come to you the moment that you realize how important every choice you make and every moment is, and, it, and it's not so much to put <laughs> too much uh, weight on you, but it, it, it sort of is that way in a way. It's just like the more that you make the same choice to serve others each time, you know, serve others or serve the self, you know, try not to take it too literally, make sure you remember yourself is a part of this equation. So it's more about, are you serving yourself like at the exclusion of other people, like at the expense of other people, like, right, then that wouldn't necessarily be good. But to, to help yourself and take care of yourself, to me, that is a service to others attitude, you, you know, you want to be around to take care of yourself, be a good example to for other people how to take care of themselves and you want to be in good shape for when other people aren't well so you can take care of them and so you see this idea of of there <clears throat> there it doesn't really matter whether you're doing the service to uh, the service to self or the service to others but you do want to make this choice in polarity to do the the service to others orientation on a focused long-term basis and the more that you can do that the more that your choice within this moment is like fine-tuned and and I don't know if I can explain any further than that I probably shouldn't um, but that's sort of the what I want to get across with the idea of time and you your choice and you know it's always right now there's no such thing as future past it's always right now and then lastly I did want to talk about well it, can you make a mistake can you go down the wrong path on this on this with this map with this blueprint that we have and sort of you can actually uh, but I would, before I read this to you, I would just want to maybe hint that uh, it might just be because you are using faulty authority. Like you're not usually um, seeking the most high, let's state. You might, you know, not be seeking God, seeking the creator, seeking truth. You might be listening to someone else who's telling you um, something f fanciful about why you should listen to them instead of, of listening to your heart. Um, you know, because like even me, I'm, when I'm telling you these things, I, I hope that you're not listening thinking that I know these things absolutely for certain. And if you don't believe in them, like you're, you're, you're foolish. Um, you know, I'm sort of just trying to make sense of things. And I'm trying to get you within a lot of the things that I state to, to get just to listen to yourself and to open your heart and and to ask to seek the truth and to seek the truth in this moment and make that choice you know within every moment like we're like we're sedating here so this is from session 69.17 and this is going to be the last quote so they state firstly we may note the situation where an entity gets a roadmap which is poorly marked and in fact is quite incorrect the entity sets out to its destination. It wishes only to reach the point of destination, but, becoming confused by the faulty authority and not knowing the territory through which it drives, it becomes hopelessly lost. Free will does not mean that there will be no circumstances when calculations will be awry. This is so in all aspects of the life experience. Although there are no mistakes, there are surprises. End of quote. And you may have heard me state that before, although there are no mistakes, there are surprises. And so that's, um, you know, they pretty much saying here that you can, you know, basically becoming confused by faulty authority. Somebody gives you a crappy map, tries to trick you, tries to deceive you. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, I don't want to get into what they might be, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of uh, religions and ideas that aren't bad. Uh, but there are some which are, are sort of what I would call a faulty map. And so maybe you've been given a faulty map even by culture, you know, even the anti-religious folks. And no, no one's got it necessarily completely right, in my opinion. But, you know, if you are doing that faulty authority, not seeking the most high, not seeking the one infinite creator, the one, right? The one, there's only one, right? It's, it's you, it's everyone, but it's still just the one. And, and, and like, you don't, I don't want to give it a name. Uh, but <laughs> anytime that, you know, what is this, another quote? What is it? You can only seek God or mammon. You can't seek both. I mean, sort of, sort of, that's the same idea as what we're getting here. And, um, 
you know, maybe you do make a mistake here and there, you go down a wrong path from some faulty authority, and you get seemingly hopelessly lost. Um, it is my understanding there is nobody that ever is completely lost. Like I said before, there is that thing called time, and you get an infinity of it. And so uh, <laughs> you could get lost, even hopelessly lost, but all those who are lost will be found. Um, so, you know, fear not. And if you feel that you are lost and almost not found, well, good news, you know, from the bottom is, is usually where you go back up and from those dark nights of the soul is usually what catalyzes you to seek the truth and to find information like this which makes you seek out the moment you know which can only happen in a moment so i hope that you take this moment or maybe the moment after or whenever you think is a good moment to try to think of what is happening in this moment and be a part of it because this is all we have is right now right here and i will use this moment to tell you i love you guys and i wish to give you a big christmas hug a big hug because that is my free will, and I choose that. <laughs> and so, you know, I have made mistakes before, and I've thought, oh, my life is getting, is so terrible, what have I done? Oh, geez, and then, you know, I've made it here, and where I'm at right now isn't so terrible, and so if I am grateful for where I am right now, I must be grateful for all the previous mistakes that I have made before, and with that, uh, that is how there are no mistakes, there are surprises. Sometimes we, you know, stumble a little bit over something and and we we find the truth laying on the other side and so i hope um <laughs> i hope that you find the truth upon your stumblings my friends and um yes so thank you so much for listening um if you guys enjoyed this podcast give it a like uh give it a share leave me a comment do whatever you would like to do i knew now have this on youtube and spotify i have um people have been asking me for if i can put it on spotify for the last year so i have finally done it it took a lot of time and effort i didn't realize you know you think you can just maybe link up your youtube one to spotify but oh no you have to get hosting to to host the podcast on and then you have to add that onto my wordpress website and then i have to go ahead and take that and apply and and apply that to spotify and then have everything go and intermingle and and, and be one and so that you can listen to my wonderful voice um talk about crazy things like the law of one so thank you guys so much for listening if you appreciate what i do you find value in it i would appreciate if you jumped on my patreon definitely gives me more freedom and time to do things like this to do the daily instagram posts um, takes a lot of effort this podcast sometimes takes a good half of the day so i'm going to spend another uh you know i'm going to try to make a patreon post soon just sort of showing you guys how much effort goes into this and just sort of give you an idea what i do and you know inside look at what my day is like and so yes um if you would like you know go ahead and join there but otherwise it doesn't matter i don't mind if you listen i appreciate you no matter what not everyone is in a place of abundance um all the time and so that is all as well my friends so anyways um wouldn't want to ramble on too much i was late with the podcast already i spent today Today, um, basically just having a snow day. I know I want to be on time with the podcast and everything, but remember this nowness is um, sinking into the moment, and we don't really get snow where I'm at a ton, a ton very often, or at least as much as we did, and so I definitely just sort of just took the day to really enjoy it and, and take part of it and be part of the serene and the quiet and, and all of that, and it was really enjoyable. And so I'm a little bit late on the podcast, and I missed a a day of posting on Instagram, so forgive me, but I hope that this um, message finds you well, and Merry Christmas to all of you who are into that, and I will talk to you again next week, and I hope you take care. See ya.